Good afternoon, our dear students, and today we're going to start the next lecture in our gastroenterology course, and the topic will be chronic diseases of small and large intestine. So let's start from the small intestine diseases, and we will talk about celiac and Whipple disease as representers. The small intestine lies between the stomach and the large intestine and includes duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. The small intestine is so called because of its, its lumen diameter is smaller than that of the large intestine, and it, this uh, intestine is longer in length than the large one. The duodenum continues into duodenum at the duodenal jejunal junction or flexure which lies to the left of the second lumbar vertebra and is fixed to the retroperitoneum by suspender ligament of traits. The inferior mesenteric vein lies to the left of the duodenal jejunal junction. There are several peritoneal fossa around the duodenal jejunal flexure, which may be the size of uh, an internal herniation of the small bowel. The rest of the small intestine is uh, from four to, uh, to six meter long, convoluted tube occupying the center of the abdomen and the pelvis. Surrounded on two sides and above the colon, the ileum continues into the large intestine at the iliosacral junction. The small intestine is differentiated from the large one by the presence of mesentery uh, and the absence of tenia coli and, and appendices which are present in the colon. The demarcation between jejunum and the ileum is not very clear. The main function of the small intestine is secretion and absorption. The epithelial cells of the small intestine secrete enzymes which digest him into the smallest particles, making them available for absorption. Concurrently, the jejunum function to mix food with bile and pancreatic enzymes to continue the digestion of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Concerning absorption, carbohydrates and prote uh, proteins are absorbed in the duodenum and jejunum respectively. The jejunum also functions to absorb most fats. The ileum function involves absorption of the vitamin B12, bile sauce, and all the digestion products which were not absorbed in duodenum and jejunum. Most three small intestine segments absorb water and electrolytes. Celiac disease is a common cause of malabsorption of one or more nutrients, also known as celiac sprue or gluten sensitive enteropathy, is a chronic disorder of the digestive tract that results in an ability to tolerate gliadine, the alcohol soluble fraction of the gluten. Gluten is a protein commonly found in the wheat, rye, and barley. Uh, most patients with celiac disease tolerate oats, but they should be monitored closely. When people with celiac disease indigest gliadin, the mucosa of their intestine is damaged by an immunologically mediated inflammatory response, resulting in mild digestion and malabsorption. Also, the celiac disease was originally considered largely a disease of the white individuals, especially persons of Europe descent. A recent observation have established that it's a common disease with the protein manifestation and worldwide distribution. Celiac disease has had several other names, including non-tropical sprue, celiac sprue, adult celiac disease, and gluten-sensitive enteropathy. Celiac disease is considered an iceberg disease. The small number of individuals have classic symptoms and manifestation related to the nutrient malabsorption, along with the vari varied natural history. The onset of symptoms can occur at all points from the first year of life through the eighth decade. A much larger number of individuals have uh, a typical celiac disease with manifestations that are not obviously related to intestinal malabsorption, as anemia, osteopenia, and fertility and neurological symptoms. Finally, even a large number of the persons have silent celiac disease. They are class, they are essentially symptomatic despite abnormal small intestinal histopathological and serological presentation. Celiac disease results from a combination of immunological responses to, to an environmental factor and genetic factors. 
Genetic play an important role in celiac disease. The incidence of celiac disease in relatives of the patient with celiac disease is significantly higher uh, than in the general population. The prevalence of the first degree relatives of the patient with celiac disease is approximately 10%. Concordance for the disease is monozygotic twins approaches 75% and is approximately 30% for first degree relatives. The interaction of alcohol soluble gliadin in wheat, barley, and rye with the mucosa of the small intestine is crucial to the pathogenesis of celiac disease. In the genus tissue transglutaminase uh, mediates clitamine and gliadin converting it from a neutral to a neg negatively charged protein. Negatively charged gliadin have been shown to induce interleukin-15 and the enteric epithelial cells, stimulating the proliferation of the natural killer cells. Uh, gliadin can produce symptoms and uh, the histological changes in the small intestine when administered the patient with asymptomatic celiac disease. Anti-gliadin antibodies can uh, frequently be identified in untreated patients. Immunoglobulin A antibodies to smooth muscles and visium um, and tissue transglutaminase are used for serological diagnosis. However, 3 to 5 percent of all patients with celiac disease are immunoglobulin A deficient. Therefore, determining total immunoglobulin A prior to antibody testing is, a, is a appropriate in patients with celiac disease. A strong association exists between celiac disease and two human leukocyte antigens, haplotypes, DQ2 and DQ8. Damage uh, to the small intestinal mucosa occurs with the presentation of gluten-derived peptide gliadin consisting of the 33 amino acids by uh, human leukocyte antigen molecules to the helper T cells. Helper T cells mediate the inflammatory response. In the general tissue transluminase diamidase gliadin to negatively charge protein and increasing its immunogenicity. Autoantibodies to type 2 transglutaminase, I'm sorry, the hallmark of the celiac disease. Absence of intestinal villi and lengthening of the intestinal creeps characterize the mucosal lesions in untreated celiac disease. More lymphocytes infiltrate the epithelium. Destruction of the <coughs> I'm sorry, absorptive surface of the intestine leads to a maldigestive and malabsorption syndrome. The hallmark of a celiac disease is an abnormal small intestine biopsy and the response of the condition to the elimination of gluten from the diet. The histologic changes have a proximal to distal intestinal distribution of severity, which probably reflects exposure of the intestinal mucosa to a rise amounts of dietary gluten. The diarrhea in celiac disease has several pathogenetic mechanisms. Diarrhea may be secondary to steatorrhea, which is primary result of changes in jejunal mucosal function. Secondary lactase deficiency, consequence of changes in jejunal brush border and enzymatic function. Bile acid malabsorption resulting in the bile acid induced fluid secretion in the colon in cases with more extensive disease involving the ileum and endogenous fluid secretion resulting from crypt hyperplasia. Celiac disease patients with more severe involvement uh, may improve temporarily with diet lactose and fat restriction while awaiting the full effects of, food, of total gluten restriction, which constitutes primary therapy. The manifestation of untreated celiac disease can be divided into gastrointestinal symptoms and extraintestinal symptoms. Among gastrointestinal systems, diarrhea is the most common symptom in case of untreated, untreated disease and present from half to 85% of all patients. Diarrhea co caused by celiac disease is due to mild digestion and malabsorption of the nutrients and stool might be waterly or semi-formed. A light tan or gray uh, and oily or frotty. They still have a characteristic full odor 
and in infants and young children, extensive diarrhea can lead to severe dehydration, electrolyte depletion, and metabolic acidosis. Malabsorption of undigested fat or steatorrhea called results in delivery of excessive dietary fat to the large bowel. And this results in the production of hydroxyfatty acids by bacteria, which causes secretion of fluids into the intestinal lumen. Flatulence and the border regimes results from the release of the gas by the intestinal bacterial flora, feasting of undigested and unabsorbed food materials, and often becomes excessive or even explosive. Weight loss in half of the patient with celiac disease is variable because the, some patients might compensate for the malabsorption by increasing their dietary intake. Weakness and fatigue in the biggest part of the patient are usually related to the general pulmonary nutrition. In some patients, severe anemia can contribute to the fatigue. Occasionally, severe hypokalemia due to loss of the potassium in the stool can cause muscular weakness. Severe abdominal pain is unusual in patients with uncomplicated celiac disease. However, abdominal bloating or cramps with ex excessive malodorous flatus is, is a common complaint. Extraintestinal systems. Uh, anemia is usually due to the impaired absorption of iron and fo or folate from the proximal small intestine. In severe celiac disease with ileal involvement, absorption of vitamin B12 may be also impaired. A bleeding diatesis is usually caused by protrombin deficiency due to the impaired absorption of the fat soluble vitamin K. Osteopenia and osteoporosis may develop for several reasons, including defective calcium transport by the diseased small intestine, vitamin D deficiency, and binding of the luminal calcium and magnesium to the unabsorbed dietary fatty acids. Neurological symptoms that um, result from hypocalcemia include motor weakness, paratestasis with sensory loss, and ataxia. Uh, seizures might develop because of the cerebral calcifications. Skin disorders, including dermatitis herpetiformis, uh, is associated in 20% uh, of patients with celiac disease. Hormonal disorders such as amenorrhea, delayed menarche, or, or infertility in women and impotence and infertility in men have been described also. Physical examination findings may reveal the following. Abdominal examination shows a protuberant and tympanic abdomen due to distension of the intestinal loops with fluids and gas. Ascites occasionally can be detected in patients with severe hypoproteinemia. Evidence of waste loss and clonal muscular wasting or loose skin, orthostatic hypotension, peripheral edema, ehemosis, uh, hyperkeratosis or dermatitis herpetiformis, Chelosis and glossitis, evidence of peripheral neuropathic, lostic, or trousseau sign. A small intestinal biopsy is required to establish a diagnosis of the celiac disease. A biopsy should be performed when patients have symptoms and laboratory findings, suggestive of nutrient malabsorption or, defi or and deficiency, as well as positive antibody test. Since the presentation of the celiac disease is often subtle, without uh, overt evidence of malabsorption or nutrient deficiency, a relatively low threshold for biopsy performance is important. The diagnosis of celiac disease requires the detection of characteristic histological changes on small intestinal biopsy together with the prompt clinical and histological response after the institution of the gluten-free diet. The classic changes seen on duodenal jejunal biopsy are restricted to the mucosa and include an increase in the number of intraempitelial lymphocytes, absence or reduced height of the villi, which can cause a flat appearance with increased creep cell proliferation, resulting in the creep hypoplasia and loss of the villous structure without, uh, with uh, consequent villous but not mucosal atrophy. And third one, a uh, cuboidal appearance and nuclei that are no longer re orientated basal in the surface epithelial cells and increased numbers of lymphocytes and plasma cells in the lamina propria. 
The primary management of the celiac disease is dietary, but research into novel non dietary therapy is ongoing. Complete elimination of uh, gluten containing grain products is essential to the treatment. Also, the majority of the patients with celiac disease respond to a gluten free diet. Persistent recurrent symptoms affect up to 20% of the patients. After an initial period of avoidance, what might be reintroduced into the diet of the patient with a celiac disease? These patients should be monitored carefully for recurrent symptoms, careful and extensive indoctrination of the patient by the physician and the dietitian is often necessary to achieve full compliance. A small percentage of patients with celiac disease fail to respond to a gluten-free diet, and some patients who are refractory corticosteroids might be healthy. In patients who fail to respond to corticosteroids, other common conditions such as lymphomas of the small intestine have to be ruled out. Whipple disease is a chronic multi-systemic disease associated with diarrhea, steatorrhea, weight loss, arthralgia, and central nervous system and cardiac problems, most likely caused by gram-positive bacterium, Trophyrema vipliae. Of note, patients with human immunodeficiency syndrome or human deficiency survivors infection do not acquire the disease. Maple disease is extremely rare worldwide, uh, and only several hundred clinical cases have been reported, mostly in North America or Western Europe. The disease appears to be associated with the human leukocyte antigen B27 haplotype. Whipple disease is the most common in white males and rarely is described in the females. The root of disease transmission is not known, but may be associated with occupational exposure to animals and soil. Uh, Whipple disease is usually observed in the middle aged and elderly patient older than 40 years old. The clinical manifestation of the disease are believed to be caused by infiltration of the various body tissue by the TB plague. The patient immune system reacts by incorporating the organism into the tissue macrophages. These macrophages can be easily observed in infiltrating the tissues using conventional light microscope. Macrophages are easily observed when periodic acid sheep stain is used for histological section. The malabsorption observed in the small bowel that is associated with the condition is believed to be secondary to disruption of the normal villus function due to the infiltration of the lamina propria on the small bowel. Patients with the arthralgias have been found to have the organism in the, in the synovial tissues. The organism have been detected in the heart valves of the patient with cardiac whipple disease and in the central ne nervous system of the patient with neurological disease presentation. Rarely, the organs can be detected in the lungs of the affected patients. Firstly, this disorder was described by George Whipple in 1907. The classic presentation of the Whipple disease is that of the wasting illness characterized uh, by arthralgias, arthritis, fever, and diarrhea. However, the form is rare. Lymphadenopathy may be present. Uh, if uh, Whipple affects the small intestines, steatorrhea often is present. The onset of the disease is in cytos and is characterized by that, that, that diarrhea, steatorrhea, abdominal pain, weight loss, migratory large joint atrophy, and fever, as well as ophthalmologic and central nervous system uh, symptoms. Dementia is a relatively late symptom and an extremely poor prognostic sign, especially in patients who experience relapse after the induction of their remission with antibiotics. Approximately 90% of patients with Whipple present with the weight loss and 70% of the patient complain of either diarrhea or arthralgias. In about three quarters of the patients, the joint manifestation are followed by the weight loss and diarrhea with a mean time of six years from onset of the joint symptoms to the diagnosis of the Whipple disease. Occult uh, gastrointestinal bleeding can be found in 80% of the patient, but prank hematochesia is uncommon. Cardiac involvement occurs around 30% of the cases. 
The diagnosis is suggested by a multisystemic disease in a patient with diarrhea and, and steatorrhea. TC biopsy of the small intestine or and other organs that may be involved, given the patient's symptoms, in the is the primary approach. The presence of past positive macrophages containing the characteristic small bacilli is suggestive for the diagnosis. However, this bacteria containing macrophage can be confused with the past positive macrophages containing that mycobacterium avium complex, which may be cause of diarrhea in patient with AIDS. The presence of uh, bacillus or, or outside of macrophages is a more important indicator of the active disease than in their presence within the macrophages. These bacteria have been successfully grown in cultures. The main stain of medical treatment for management of local disease is antibiotic therapy. Surgery is not part of the therapy for the local disease. Once a diagnosis is established, the antibiotics are started, patients may be discharged for continued therapy as outpatients. Consultation with gastroenterologist, cardiologist, rheumatologist, orthopedist, and neurosurgeon may be necessary uh, for obtaining uh, the appropriate tissue vibes in selected patients. In outpatient monitoring, patient with the disease should be monitored with the polymerase chain reaction because it's the most sensitive and specific method to determine if they are responding to antibiotic therapy. Uh, Bacilla has been detected through PCR in normal saliva, gastric uh, juice, and intestinal tissue. The standard initial treatment regime is either intravenous ceftriaxone 2 grams once daily or 2 million units of penicillin G intravenously every four hours, uh, both for 14 days duration. After the initial treatment is completed, one year of maintenance therapy with the oral double strand metoprim sulfamitoxin twice daily. Large intestine disorders, and we will talk about irritable bowel syndrome and the group of inflammatory bowel disease. So let's talk at first from the colon anatomy and functions. The large intestine is approximately uh, 1.5 meters long and comprises the cecum, colon, rectum, anal canal, and anus. The structure of the large intestine is very similar to that of the small intestine, except that its mucosa is completely devoid of villi. The second is about uh, 6 cm long and extends downwards into the appendix. The winding tubular sac containing lymphoid tissue. Uh, the appendix is thought to be the vestige of the redundant organ. Its narrow and twisted shape makes it an attractive site for the accumulation and the multiplication, multiplication I'm sorry, of intestinal bacteria. Food resist starts by traveling upwards through the ascending column located on the right side of the abdomen. The ascending column bends near the liver and the right colic flexure or, hep or hepatic flexure called and becomes the transverse colon passing across to the left side of the abdomen. Just above the spleen at the left colic flexure, the transverse colon becomes the descending colon which runs down the left side of the abdomen. Before the next bend, the descending colon transforms into the sigmoid colon. The ascending colon, descending colon, the rectum are located in the retroperitoneum outside midst of peritoneal cavity. The transverse and sigmoid colon attached to the posterior abdominal wall by the mesocolon. Distally, the large intestine opens into rectum, which is continued by the anal canal. The rectum forms the final 20 centimeters of GI tract. It continues with the sigmoid colon and connects with the anal canal and the anus. Meal passes from the small to the large intestine within the eight to nine hours of indigestion. The small intestine will be absorbed about 90% of the indigested water, and the large intestine absorbs most of the remaining water and process that converts to liquid chemical residues into semi-false stools or feces. The large intestine has three major functions, absorption of the water and electrolytes, formation and transport of fishes, feces, and chemical digestion by gut microbes. 
The presence of the food residues in the uh, colon stimulates haustral contraction, which occur approximately every 30 minutes and last about one minute each. Each contraction, uh, each haustral uh, distends and contracts, pushing the food residues into the next uh, gaustrum. The contraction also makes the food residues, uh, thereby facilitating the absorption of the water. The large intestine also absorbs electrolytes. Antiperistaltic contraction of uh, food residues back towards the ileocecal valve, slowing the transit down and giving more time to the large intestine to absorb water and, and electrolytes. The large intestine does not secrete its own digestive enzymes. In this part of GI tract, chemical digestion occurs exclusively through the action of millions of colonic bacteria. Through fermentation, these bacteria break down some of the retaining remaining carbohydrates, which release the hydrogen carbon dioxide and methane that creates flat or gas. Colonic bacteria also protect the intestine from potentially harmful bacteria coming from the external environment and can synthesize certain vitamins. Irritable bowel syndrome is defined as recurrent abdominal pain on average at least one day per week in the last three months, with two or more of the following. Related to defecation, associated with the change in frequency of the stool, or associated with the change in the form of the stool. Irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic functional disorder of GI tract characterized by chronic abdominal pain and alter of bowel habits in the absence of, the, of an oncogenic disease. Yet the most common reason of this syndrome is uh, to visit a uh, gastroenterologist and the second most common reason after a common food to be absent from work. Around four criteria for the diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome requires that patients have had recurrent abdominal pain on average at least one day per week during three previous months that is associated with two or more following. Related to defecation, associated with the change in the stool frequency, associated with the change in the stool form or appearance. Uh, there are some subtypes of this uh, disorder with, depending on predominant constipation or diarrhea or uh, mixed bowel habits uh, can be differentiated. People uh, whose symptoms do not fit into any category are considered to have irritable bowel syndrome unclassified. Traditional theories regarding the pathophysiology of irritable bowel syndrome may be visualized as three-part complex of altered gastrointestinal motility, visceral hyperalgesia, and psychopathopathology. More recently, it's believed that components of the gut microbiota potentially includes brain morphology and function behavior and cognition, which expands the paradigm of the gut-brain axis. Altered GA motility includes distinct aberration in the small and the large bowel motility. The myelectric activity of the colon is composed of the background slow waves with uh, superimposed spike potentials. Patients who are prone to diarrhea demonstrate this alternation to a greater degree than patients who are prone to constipation. Small bowel dysmotility manifests in delayed meal transit in patients prone to constipation and in accelerated meal transit in patients prone to diarrhea. An enhanced perception of the normal motility and visceral pain characterizes the irritable bowel syndrome. Rectus sigmoid and small bowel bone inflation produce pain and lower volumes in patients than uh, in controls. Patients who are affected describe by the uh, dermatomal distribution of referred pain. Association between psychiatric disturbances and irritable bowel syndrome pathogenesis are not clearly identified. Constipation, no, sorry, constipation results in complaints of the hard stool of narrow caliber. Painful and frequent defecation and uh, intractability to laxatives. Diarrhea usually is described as small volumes of loose stool with evacuation preceded by urgency or frequent defecation. Postprandial urgency is common and there is alternation between constipation and diarrhea. 
Uh, description of the abdominal pain are protein. Pain frequently is diffused without radiation. Common site of the pain include lower abdomen, especially the left lower quadrant. Acute episodes of sharp pain are often superimposed on a more constant dull ache. Meal may precipitate pain and defecation commonly improves pain. Defecation may not fully relieve pain, however, pain from presumed gas pockets and splenic flexure may masquerade as anterior chest pain or left upper quadrant abdominal pain. Patient frequently reports increased amounts of the bloating and the gas. Quantity measurements fail to support this claim. People with irritable bowel syndrome may manifest increasing abdominal circumference through the day as assessed by computer tomography scan. Clear or white decoree of a non inflammatory etiology is commonly reported. Epidemiological associations with dyspepsia, heartburn, nausea, vomiting, sexual dysfunction, and urinary frequency and urinary urgency have been noted. The patient with irritable bowel syndrome has an overall healthy appearance, but may be tense or anxious. The patient may present with sigmoid tenderness or palpable sigmoid cord. Symptoms that consistent with irritable bowel syndrome should alert the clinician to, pos uh, to possibility of an organic pathology. Inconsistent symptoms uh, include the following onset in the middle or old, uh, older age, acute symptoms, progressive symptoms, nocturnal symptoms, anorexia, weight loss, fever, erectile bleeding, painless uh, diarrhea, steatorrhea, gluten intolerance. Management of irritable bowel syndrome consists primarily of providing psychological support and recommending dietary measures. Pharmacologic treatment is injunctive and should be directed to symptoms such as modulation of uh, persistent visceral hyperalgesia. Hyper supplementation may improve symptoms of constipation and diarrhea. Individualize the treatment because uh, a few patients experience exacerbated bloating and distension with high fiber diets. Probiotics are very interesting for treating symptoms, but it's unclear for which patient probiotics are helpful and in what form those combinations of strain. The American College of Gastroenterologists in uh, 2009 uh, position statement concludes that uh, psychological interventions, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, dynamic psychotherapy, and hypnotherapy are more effective than placebo. Frequent visits for, with the clinician enhance the patient. Uh, provide a relationship, especially in patients who are recently diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. Visits can become less frequent as patients are educated and reassured. Agents used for management of symptoms in irritable bowel syndrome includes anticholinergics, antidiarrheals, tricyclic antidepressants, prokinetic agents, both formal excitives, serotonin receptor antagonists, chloride channel activators, and pedialyte cyclase C. Agonist. Inflammatory bowel disease is an idiopathic disease caused by dysregulated immune response to host intestinal microflora. The two major types of this uh, disease are present and they are ulcerative colitis, which is limited to the colonic mucosa, and Crohn disease, which can affect any segment of the gastrointestinal tract from the mouth to the anus involved skip lesions and is transmural. The high rate of irritable bowel disease is assumed to be in the developed countries and the lower rates are considered to be in developing regions. Colder climate regions and urban areas have a greater rate of the disease than those of warmer climates and rural areas. Internationally, the incidence of uh, inflammatory bowel disease is approximately 24-5 cases per each uh, 100 thousands of person in a year for ulcerative colitis and till 16 cases for the same amount of the people for Crohn disease. Overall prevalence of uh, inflammatory bowel disease is 396 cases per each uh, 100,000 um, persons annually. The average patient with ulcerative colitis has a 
50% probability of having another player during the next two years. However, patients may have only one player over 25 years and others may have persistent uh, exit disease. The clinical course of Crohn's disease is much more variable uh, than that of the psoriatic colitis and is dependent on the anatomic location and extent of the disease. Periodic remission and exacerbation are all in the chronic disease and the relapse over the 10 years happens uh, almost in 90% of patients. Patients with inflammatory bowel disease are more prone to the development of the malignancy. Persons with Crohn have a higher rate of small bowel malignancy. The also appears to be an increased risk for inflammatory bowel disease in patients with asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Psychological morbidity affects patients with disease, especially younger patients, and are typically associated with depression and anxiety symptoms, but also exhibit externalizing behaviors. Three characteristics define the etiology of inflammatory bowel disease. Genetic predisposition, altered or dysregulated immune response, and altered response to gut microorganisms. First, the Chris relatives have to from 5 to 20 fold increased risk of developing of inflammatory bowel disease as compared with persons from unaffected families. Uh, of patients with inflammatory bowel disease, still 25% are estimated to have first degree relative with their disease. The genetic predisposition for psoriatic colitis, colitis appears to be less uh, in magnitude than Crohn's disease, but consists of a set of genetic susceptibility that shows significant overlap with the Crohn's disease. Possible factors related to this event include a pathogenic uh, organism or an inappropriate response. The most consistent association describes uh, has been smoking, which increases the risk of this Crohn's disease. However, current smoking protects, protects against ulcerative colitis, whereas former smoking increases the risk of ulcerative colitis. Dietary factors have also been consistently described. In some studies, high fiber intake and high intake of the fruits and vegetables appear protective in case of uh, inflammatory bowel disease. The manifestation of inflammatory bowel disease generally depends on the area of the intestinal tract involved. The commonly experienced symptoms of the Crohn's disease include recurrent abdominal pain and diarrhea. Sometimes the diagnosis may be delayed by several months to a few years, and these symptoms are not specific for sorry, inflammatory bowel disease. Patients with inflammatory bowel disease may have symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome with cramping irregular bowel habits, the passage of the mucus without blood or pus. Systemic symptoms are common in inflammatory bowel disease and include weight loss, fever, sweet smells, and arthralgias. A low-grade fever may be the first warning sign of the flare. Patients are commonly fatigued, uh, which is often related to the pain, inflammation, and anemia that accompany disease activity. Recurrences may occur with emotional stress, infectious, or other acute illness. Pregnancy data problems use of uh, cathartics or antibiotics, and, or a non adherence to therapy. Uh, World gastroenterology uh, organization indicates the following symptoms may be associated with inflammatory damage of the digestive tract. First one, diarrhea. Mucus of blood may be present in the stool, can occur at night, and consistent may occur. Constipation may be the primary symptom of ulcerative colitis, and when the disease is limited to the rectum, obstipation may occur and may proceed to bowel obstruction. Bowel movement abnormalities uh, in which pain or rectal bleeding may be present as, as well as severe urgency and tenesmus. Commonly present uh, abdominal cramping and pain in the lower uh, right lower quadrant in the Crohn disease occur periumbilically or in the left lower quadrant in the moderate or severe ulcerative colitis cases. Nausea and vomiting occurs more often in Crohn than in ulcerative colitis. Uh, no specific ulcerative colitis was first described in 1875 by two English physicians, Wilkes and Moxon, who distinguished it from the aerial disease uh, caused by infectious agents. 
The common and pathway of the ulcerative colitis is inflammation of the mucosa of the intestinal tract, causing ulceration, edema, bleeding, and fluid and electrolyte loss. In severe studies, the genetic factor appeared to, to influence the risk of inflammatory bowel disease by causing disruption of epithelial barrier integrity, deficits in autophagy, the deficiency in innate pattern recognition receptor, and problems with lymphocyte differentiation, especially in Crohn's disease. Inflammatory mediators have been identified in, in uh, inflammatory bowel disease and considerable Evidence suggested that these mediators play an important role in the pathologic and clinical characteristics of these disorders. Cytokines, which are released by macrophages in response to various antigenic stimuli, bind to different receptors and produce autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine effects. Cytokines differentiate lymphocytes into different types of T cells. Helper C cells type 1 are associated principally with the Crohn disease, whereas T2 uh, cells are associated principally with the ulcerative colitis. The immune response disrupts the uh, intestinal mucosa and leads to a chronic inflammatory process. The in the ulcerative colitis cases, the inflammation begins in the rectum and extends proximally in an anti oh, sorry, uninterrupted fashion to the proximal colon and could eventually involve the entire length of the large intestine. The rectum is always involved in ulcerative colitis and unlike in Crohn's disease. There are no skip areas, means normal areas of the bowel uh, interspersed with disease areas, unless pretreated with the topical rectal therapy. The disease remains confined to the rectum in approximately 25% of the cases. And in the reminded cases, ulcerative colitis spreads proximally and continuously. Pancolitis occurs in 90% of the patients. The distal terminal ileum may become inflamed in a superficial manner, referred to as blackwashed ileitis. Even with less than total colonic involvement, the disease is strictly and uh, uniformly con as ulcerative colitis becomes chronic, the colon becomes a rigid uh, force shortened tube that lacks uh, its uh, unusual haustral markings, leading to the lead pipe appearance concerned on the bar observed on the barium enema. On the picture, you can see how it looks like actually a bubble for the patient with inflammatory uh, bubble disease. In this case, it's uh, uh, ulcerative colitis, demonstra uh, demonstrating the appearance of the pseudopolyps in the patient. Uh, ulcerative colitis is a mucosal disease that usually involves the rectum and extends proximately to involve all parts of the colon. Proximal spritz occurs in continuity without areas of unwanted mucosa, as we already talked. Uh, when the whole colon is involved, the inflammatory extends three, two to three centimeters into the terminal ileum in 20% of the patient. And in the endoscopic changes, sorry, for black washleitis are superficial and mild and are of little clinical significance. Now, salt variation in the macroscopic activity may suggest keep areas. Biopsies from normal appearing mucosa are usually abnormal. Thus, it's important to obtain multiple biopsies from the apparently uninvolved mucosa, whether proximal or distal during endoscopy. One caveat is an infective medical therapy can change the appearance of the mucosa, such as either uh, skip areas or the entire colon can be microscopically normal. With mild inflammation, the mucosa is an intermus and has the fine granular surface that resembles sandpaper. In more severe disease, the mucosa is hemorrhagic, edematose, and ulcerated. In long standing disease, inflammatory polyps, pseudopolyps uh, may be present as a result of epithelial regeneration. <laughs>